we're going to start to do some training around what we think is the number one most important fundamental in the swing. And when we define fundamental, we define it as absolutely necessary. Can't live without it. The, the guys and gals on the TV, however their swing looks, they all adhere to this one fundamental. Is that true? That is true. And what would that be? Low point. Or uh, maybe an easier way to think about it as opposed to think about low point of where your divot starts. So one of the things that you're going to need to be able to do to compress a golf ball and hit it solid is as the club is coming down, you're going to want to hit the golf ball first and then the divot is going to start slightly after the golf ball. So it is absolutely necessary for you to work on controlling where that divot starts. Very good. So where the divot starts, the lowest point of the golf swing is really, really important. Another way to say that is, can you hit the ground in the same spot? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of you at home are asking for consistency and we appreciate that. You want the ball to be better and you want it to fly straighter and longer. Uh, we would start with just, can you control where the club's hitting the ground? Mm -hmm. So we're going to start that. That's going to be a super important part of your training. Remember the one thing commitment, we're going to get back to that and that just has to do with where this club's hitting the ground. So before we get a ball in the way, and we want you to do this at home, start swinging and we just want you to pay attention to, back to the awareness piece, pay attention to where the club's hitting the ground. Some of you, as you do this, maybe the club misses the ground. Maybe some of you are taking divots that are really, really deep. Keep doing it. Maybe some of you are starting to become aware of the club moves around and it doesn't interact with the ground in the same spot every time. Yep. Mm -hmm. The earth is big, people. Make sure you hit it as you're doing this activity. You gotta hit the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss the earth. So for the irons, for the ball to elevate, we would like the club to interact with the turf. It's going to help you find the sweet spot. And then the, the degree to which you can control where that club's hitting the ground is going to lead to more consistent shots, more solid shots. Yep. Right? Better outcomes. More consistent distance control. Okay. So on that one, you just really started to focus with where the club was hitting the ground. And maybe you became aware of the fact that it's easier said than done. It doesn't always hit the same spot. Nope. All right. Uh, what I'm going to ask you to do now, buddy, we're going to use this ball as a reference. So get yourself a ball, get yourself a tee, a leaf, whatever it is. And I want you to swing here. But I'm going to ask you to hit the ground in different spots. So let's start by trying to hit the ground over here behind the ball. So I can see on that one you hit the ground well to the right of the ball. Very good. So at home keep this up, see if you can hit the ground to the right of the ball. Now, to see if you can hit the ground some, uh, somehow, some way over here to the left of the ball. So at home, see if you can hit the ground to the left of the ball. Okay, now we're going to go back, hit it to the right of the ball again. So we want you to hit it to the right of the ball. And as you start to do this, you start to feel like, oh, that's, that's different. I can hit it over here and I can hit it over there. Now we're going to go back to the lead side, the target side of the ball, or from your perspective looking at the ball, the left side of the ball. Alright, now we're going to ask you to hit it somewhere in between, so somewhere right at the ball if you will. Here's the question for you. Question for you at home. Were you able to move around where that club was hitting the ground? Yeah, uh, yeah. It was actually it was no problem. So I think one of the questions you might be asking yourself at home, well, how do you do that? But we're not going to give you the answer. You have to run some experiments and figure out what works for you and what doesn't. So what I was noticing is as I was trying to hit behind the ball, I felt my weight or pressure kind of hang back on my right side. When I was trying to get the divot in front of the ball, I felt the pressure kind of stay on my lead side. And then when I was trying to get it at the ball, it was a little bit closer to 50-50. So that's how I did it. But just know at home, there's really no right way and wrong way. You just have to kind of run some experiments and figure out what works best for you. There you go. So we're going to run the experience and then, through, or the experiments, pardon me. And through that, a lot of you, most of you, found out that you had the power to influence where that club was hitting the ground. Yep. What a gift. So you yeah, have the power cool. to change. Yeah, you yeah. have the power to change. So we don't have to chunk it for the rest of our lives. You can shift it. 
You don't have to blade it for the rest of your life. You can shift it. Mm -hmm. There you go. And the nice thing about this is just remember that, you know, as we're doing this, there's a time and a place for each one of those spots that I was hitting. So an example would be in the bunker, I'm not necessarily trying to get a divot in front of the ball because if I'm green side in the bunker, that ball will go way too far. I actually need to move my low point backwards. So it's really important to understand that as you're doing this, there's really no right and wrong with this low point stuff. You have to have the ability to shift it because the golf course is gonna demand different shots. And if you don't have the ability to shift your low point, you're not gonna be able to hit all the shots. Yeah, so what's more valuable than consistency? Variability, <laughs> adjust, yeah. You got to change, you're gonna to have to change something. So through these training programs, adjusting or varying what you're doing is gonna be another foundational piece to what's to follow. Okay, so now that you saw with those swings that you can hit the ground over here, hit the ground over here, hit the ground somewhere in the middle. Yep. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the ball. Uh, ben, I tell you what, I guess it could matter from the player's perspective to what degree are you trying to hit it in front or behind, is that fair? Yep. All right, very good. So what continuum would we use to help uh, our friends at home identify what works or what doesn't? Well, we always like, uh, we, are, we like to use the word slight, moderate, and severe. So uh, as I'm doing this activity, you know, I might try to hit slightly behind the ball, moderately behind the ball, severely behind the ball, slightly in front, moderately in front, severely in front. And I'm basically trying to match up my intention versus what is actually happening. Are you going to back to a calibrating? Calibrating my low point. Procedure. Yeah. So low point is number one. Yep. We'd have to be able to adjust to then calibrate. And the ball's gonna be the teacher to let you know what works and what doesn't for you. You got it. All right, very good. So now we're getting into the nuts and bolts of this thing here. So, Ben, where would you like to start? And what experiment are you gonna do first? Uh, I'm going to start with, I'm gonna to try to take a divot that's slightly in front of the ball. So I'm gonna to try to hit the ground just slightly in front of the ball here. Very good. I'm see what happens. So nothing else, you're not trying to keep your head down, you're not gonna to try to keep your left arm straight, any of that. Not trying right to do down. one motion, not trying to do bounce. I'm trying to hit the ground slightly in front of the ball and that's it. So the power of intention here is what we're going to leverage. You're going to be surprised at what you can do when you just simply intend to. All right. So on that one, were you committed one to five again? Were you committed to just slightly in front of the ball? Yeah, I was a five there. And then uh, one of the things I noticed is the golf ball told me that my divot was slightly behind the ball there. So I'm going to run it a couple more times and see what happens. So I'm not going to make an assumption off one ball. Yeah. I'm going to hit a couple shots and see if that continues to happen. All right, so let's do slightly in front of the ball again. Same thing happened. My commitment was good. I was still a five. Notice the contact was still slightly behind the ball. Got it. Got it. So let's do one more at home. So you're going to do three where you intend to hit the ball slightly in front. You want to do that right now? Yeah, so I got the same outcome all three times. So I'm going to make the assumption that when I try to take a divot that's slightly in front of the ball, the reality is my divot is starting slightly behind the ball. It's like I'm flip flopped. So kind of like the putting. There's yes. just a difference. Yeah, no, no problem. So this isn't good or bad. This is just the way it is. Yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, so we're not going to talk about the way things should be. In this training program, we're going to deal with, with the way things are. Absolutely. We're going to deal with reality, and that's just fine. So as long as you understand this is the way it is, even for the best players on TV, you get farther faster. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. So let's, let's get on with it. Here we go. Okay, so slightly seemed like you hit a little bit behind. Where are you going to experiment next? Are you going to go moderately? Yeah, I'm going to go moderately. So just a little bit more than slightly and see what happens. Cool. The cool thing is, as I did slightly in front, I maybe uncovered what would uh, work for me in the bunker. Uh, there you go. So you can always use it. It's always useful somewhere, somehow, some way in the future. Oh, well that sounded different. <laughs> Wait. <a minute. laughs> that sounded different. So in your mind, rather than just go slightly in front of this ball, you went somewhere farther out, like just more? Uh, probably three to four <coughs> inches. Got it. So your perception of moderately could be different than our friends at home. It's open to interpretation, right? So there's no right and wrong here once again. Totally. So totally subject to your perception, your interpretation of this. Just keep flowing through the activities. Like, maybe if you go moderately in front of the ball and putt like that, you can be my partner. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I gotta, I gotta earn my spot on your team. Is that what you're saying? I told this you is this my tryout. <laughs> I told you this training can't work. <laughs> okay. 
moderately in front. So now what we're going to have you do, uh, Ben, what would you say? Should we go like slightly or moderately behind or go to severely in front? I think just for the folks at home, let's go severely in front and see what happens because my interpretation of severely is maybe different than uh, what your interpretation of that is at home. Very good. So some of you may be experiencing that you're hitting the ball much differently now. Some of you may be experiencing like, man, I'm tapping it or something's happening. Bear with us. Keep moving. We're going to see severely in front now and see what happens. So to me, severely in front is here a lot. Like that's a lot, right? <laughs> so in my mind, when I think of severe, I'm going way out here. I'm almost running out of the driving range, man. Some of, us, some of you might not think that way. You might think three or four inches is severe. Yeah. So again, back to Ben's point, it's open to your interpretation. Let's see what happens. So we're going to run the experiment. <laughs> so in that case, you try it way in front. Keep going. I'm going to talk to our, our friends at home. When you try severe in front, what I heard was a top on the first one and really pretty thin on the second one. It didn't sound like the moderately one. So it seemed like in this case for Ben right now, trying to hit the ground moderately in front of the ball was the most helpful. This might be true from some, for some of you. Others, it could be slightly or severely. You'd be surprised. Let's go the other way with sure. the bike. So I want you to try to hit one ball. At home, you're going to hit four balls where you try to hit slightly behind the ball. solid and then some of you could be asking well you have to hit the divot you said you have to hit the divot in front yeah which is true but remember there's going to be a difference between what you intend to do and the reality so some of you might hit more solid shots when you try to hit behind the ball others might be like man that's normal <laughs> yeah i mean funny story about that uh so two years ago i remember around uh you know, I was on vacation, I was playing some golf with my father-in-law, and I remember warming up on the driving range. And the outcome I was getting on the driving range is they were all going really low, they felt like I was hitting it low on the club face. And I went back to this calibration experiment. So that day, I happened to be trying to hit the ground way back here, and I played my best round of the season. So at home, don't try to get things right. Just know that there's gonna be a right way that works for you. There's no such thing as right and wrong, but something is gonna jump out at you and it's gonna allow you to have a lot of success. So it was interesting. So that day, I had to look here to hit it solid and then the next day I went and played again. But guess what? I had to change my intention because that wasn't working and I started chunking it. <laughs> so things are gonna change. That's why we have to be dynamic. We have to have some clarity, um, principles, what matters, what doesn't. We would say committing to one thing matters, yes? Yeah. We would say time. low point matters, yes? Yep. We would say being able to adjust or move it around really matters, yes? Yep. Very good. Very How good. you get there doesn't. Right. <laughs> so a lot of you at home get bogged down or stuck in the minutia, the debate, the details, the bureaucracy. Ay, ay, ay. We're not doing that here. This goes on and on. <laughs> yeah, so holy moly. Please, stop the madness. However, to play better golf does require taking action. Does require some degree of training, yeah. Maybe some open mindedness. Open mindedness, clarity, <laughs> precision, things like that. All and those then things. that's what we're gonna do here. Okay, so let's do, uh, for the sake of it, just uh, for contrast, we always like contrast and training. Do severely behind. Oh, yeah. So you're gonna try to hit the ball severely behind on this one. <laughs> So for some of you who, who struggle chunking the ball and blading the ball, this could feel normal. Maybe this is because this is what you already do. It's actually useful to practice the errors, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because then you understand, oh, that's why I chunk or blade, right? And then maybe when you went more forward, it helped it get more stop. So moving around the low point is going to be something that uh, we just ask you to do, and then we're going to ask you to do it again uh, in episodes to follow.